So if I had a warm up in a like now, I'd, I'd do exactly that. I'd do lunges and, and a few and these to get things because that obviously makes you want stuff that warms everything up. So you're warming up your ankles, your knees, your calves, your quads. You got to support yourself. So that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very important to warm. So, see that does a lot of things. I guess you can, then you want to look after your shoulders as well. That's why I do these. This has really helped me just to simply get that. And, I, and you shorten it and it, you know, a finger each time and keep your arms straight. That's great for me, chin back. And I've been doing, um, um, plenty of, uh, rotator cuff work as well. You should warm yourself up on that. The other great, you know, so find a little routine and then where's my beast? Where's my beast? Where's my beast? <laughs> oh, this is fun. Oh, this is fun. Steel, steel bar. <laughs> so, yeah, I warm my wrists up with this thing and then you, you modify it and you go, did I show you my, my figure of eights? Get you, cause that's, you know, supple, left and right. So important to warm up your wrists. Cause you get older, you're right when you're young. <laughs> but you get old enough, hit a, I've made a millions of swings then. That's a great one as well, simple as that. See, you get to get some full set out of it and then even feel like you're banging a nail in the ceiling. That's another good one as well. You want to be able to hang on to that. And I love doing swings. I just love doing slow warm-up swings with this thing. It's there, stretch as much as I can. Back down to prior to impact and woof and through. So and I've even done some lefties. I've never did lefties, but I've been doing a few lefties, which is actually quite very good for you as well. People swing left-handed. That's really good for you. That. Really good I never did it from you know for a whole of my career, but suddenly. I said, do a few left. I said, all right, why not? And you actually get better. You actually can, it's so funny when you first do it, you get no swish. You know, this way, you obviously get about a bit of speed. This way, when you first start, you're like, like granddad. But after a while, you start to think, oh, okay. And it all helps this support. What else are we doing? Um, some speed drills. But, but, but the bottom line is you've got to get all of this. You need good old squats. Um, another great one I was given early in the year. So two great ones was one was the thoracic bands, as I call it, for the, and the other one I do is um, they're uh, they're called Captain Morgan's, right? So you lock this. So you imagine this is your backswing. So there's the backswing, getting the leg over. There's your weight. So you see how that supports it. Get me like so. If you get really good, you, you keep your balance like that. There. There's your backswing, how it's supported. Then obviously you do you, what I call it, your follow through, because there's your follow through, how that's got to support while the right side's moving. That was really good, been really good for me. That's helped me a lot because, you, what, you know, as a swing, you've got to wind up and support it, pull, then this has to stop while this wants to go, get me? Yeah. You can't. You lose all your power if everything's moving together. So you want to have that and that and a bit of that. So anyway. Um, That's pretty good for uh, someone of his age with no disrespect. Da -da -da. You know, very, very flexible, very strong. And he was the forerunner of bringing um, strength, flexibility and working out into golf. If you look at Rory and those guys, they're all absolutely ripped. Well, Nick was way ahead of his time. He was doing that a long time before it was trendy to do it. He was pushing the envelope. We talked about it on the way over. Um, you know, he really changed how people train for golf. He was very much a trendsetter all the way through his career. And uh, a lot of the things that he was doing 20, 25 years ago stood the test of time and a lot of people are doing them now. But so. you're lucky because we now have science to prove it. We were guessing, we were, we were experimenting, you know. And when somebody said, well, that's good. So you used to try and but now they're doctors, they've got PhDs, they've got masters in it. So if you really, you should learn how to warm up for golf, cool down after, and you should learn how to strengthen yourself. You need, you need 
strength in certain parts of your body, you need speed in certain parts of your body, you need mobility, you need balance in certain parts. So it's, you, it's, an, it's getting that blend. And the good thing is they know what they're talking about now. So, uh, um, so I would th I thought for this, this, this session is, um, you know, I played back in, in January, I played it down in South Africa. Hadn't played for a while, and so to go to a golf tournament and play is nerve-wracking, isn't it? You know, you've, if, you, if you're going to test yourself, that's what it's all about. It's like, how well have I prepared? What have I got to, to, to then go and compete? So the better you've, it's pretty simple. They talk about, you know, nerves and being nervous. Well, the better you prepare, the better you know about your game, and if you have op the other important thing I was talking about, if you have options as well, um, then that really helps you when you're getting nervous. So if you, so when you're prepared well, and know what you're doing, you can walk out onto the first tee, and if the whole demand has got water down the left for right for openers, you have a shot. You're absolutely fine. You know, if you know what you're doing pretty simple in this game if you know what you're doing if you know how to do it then then you're fine you, you get on with it it's sure it's a challenge but that's the, that's the great thing if you stand up on the tee and I've done that when I you know I started TV moons ago and I stood up and I'll never forget I stood up on the tee in Germany and I looked and I went my eyes went left rough right rough left rough right I thought oh my god how do I hit the fairway so I had no game, no game plan or anything, and then, then you stand up and you're like, oh my God, how do I get this thing? Lost all my vision and everything. So I've, you know, so I was really pleased when I went to South Africa, but it was interesting. What I want to talk to you about is, you know, I, I, I like to work the golf ball both ways, fade and draw. My draw wasn't working at, a, at, at all. So my coach said, why don't we just forget the draw right now? It, because you were struggling. I said, that's good thinking. And I thought, so I'm not even going to try. So I'm just going to go with fade. Worked on a swing. And I only had one swing. Pretty unusual for me. I had one, one follow through thought that I kept rehearsing. And I went to South Africa with, with, with that one thought. And sure enough, halfway through the, court, the start of the second round, I start getting nervous and I start getting nervous with this follow through and I really didn't like it and I'm really struggling. And so, but, but I, of course, from past, I've got other follow throughs, but I haven't rehearsed them. I haven't practiced them. So I didn't know when to use it, right? So I then had three bad holes. I'm now gonna miss the cut. So I thought, oh, okay, now it's time to try the other follow through. And of course, I then hit my tee shot as far as the two guys I was playing. I was 20 yards short of them all day because they're you know, young, young kids on tour. And then I stood up seven iron, back, in, back pin. I'm like, I've got to make a birdie because I'm two outside the cut right now. And I go, whoosh, dump, trying this other follow through, right? So I'm like, Ish. so I, so it taught me a valuable lesson. So when I played my best, I had pretty close to one backswing, a few minor little alterations here and there, but I had four follow-throughs, four di different follow-throughs, different feelings for different shots. So we were in high fade, high draw, low fade, and I used to do different things. So, um, and I give them names and all sorts of things. So whether you're, um, the other thing for you to work out is whether you are visual, whether you can stand there and see a golf ball fly. Some people can't, right? Some people will just do it purely on feel. You know, they, they will feel a draw. I'm going to do this. I'm going to feel a fade. And some people will just say, I want to hit a draw. I want to hit a fade, right? Nothing wrong with it. I mean, I can, I mean, Daniel Berger, I think is, I said, what do you do? He says, well, I just say, hit a draw, hit a fade. Then what do you do? Nothing. I hit a draw, hit a fade. Doesn't get it, right? Well, not get it, wrong word. He, that's what he does. Yeah? Very interesting. And you get other players, you know, as you know, I learned from Jack Nicholas that era. Uh, he called it going to the movies, how he could visually see 
the ball fly to his target. Tiger called it putting into, as he used to putt, you know, putting into the picture. So he's seen a picture of him standing there, ball rolling, ball going in the hole. So many more uh, psychologists will probably believe in creating pictures, yeah? Apparently we generate 90,000 pictures a day and 70,000 are the same as yesterday. So if you had a lousy day yesterday and you were walking around like this and you get up this morning and you go, well, well we've got lemon around. Guess what pictures you said? But at least there's space in there for you to go, all right, I'm not gonna, come on, it's gonna be a better day. New goals, new challenges, ah, new pictures, yeah? So learning to change the picture. So I was very visual, very, used to see the ball fly. I could see myself swing as well. I could stand back and see myself, or I'd be mimicking somebody, we get to that. And I was very auditory. I actually gave myself verbal commands throughout the swing. And they weren't, you know, I had this reputation. Obviously I practiced a lot, my swing was consistent, so you get this mechanical reputation, but it wasn't at all, because my swing thoughts will be, or my keys would be as simple as it might be scrape or slow and set or turn and hold off and wrap it around your neck, get me? So they're not, it's not technical, is it? I wouldn't say, it's not like, oh, 47 degrees, 72, turn the drop weight 99%, get me? None, none of that. Is so, it true that you can remember all your swing thoughts from, each, from many individual rounds, even today? Oh, well, I, yeah, well, not for any, many, I stuck with those four, so when I played my, some of my best, so I had, um, I'll tell you them now, because the old one, and then I'll tell you my new one. So my old ones were, I had, um, for a fade, I had to hold off fade, i.e. keeping this right wrist in the right place, yeah? So I used to hang on to that angle. So I used to set the club as much as we could and hang on to the set all the way through impact. And that used to produce, see what I've got straight out the box, hold off fade, it should go. High, tiny little bit of fade, okay? That worked. <laughs> then I used to have, for the fades, used to have a, called a chicken wing, when I would break the, this arm, and so this club face is no way it is ever gonna turn over. So it should, you know, and you'd play a little knockdown shot as well, so you'd put it a little bit back, but the arm would, would break, and that ball is going to the right. You can put a gun against my head, and it will go to the right. So then I had one which we used to call, it was the full release. So basically you're doing the opposite with this hand. So the hanging on, you let it go. So that would, um, in the windy weather, we used to call that the bunt follow through. But um, good image was like Ernie Els for me. Ernie Els for through impact was like this, where I would be like that on other shots. So this one, so if you stand up and let it, basically letting it go full, Full right wrist, didn't quite get it. So this would be trying to hit, you know, a full swing, full flat out, little bit of, there you go, that's holding against the wind. So that's got a couple of yards of draw to it. And then the other one was called rotate, rotate, which basically is when I wanted to really hook one around the corner. So ball back a bit, all that rotate, the arms going back, rotate, the arms going through. So that was the only change, but rotate, rotate, and that thing would hook against the wind. All right, that was my old four shots. Pretty damn impressive, I can tell. <laughs> so, so now I've got three fades. I've got three fades. And so now I've got, it's fun, so I've given them all names, which is cool, because when I, I love to hit balls, I still hit lots of balls, so I can hit them in, in threes, and I'm testing all the time. So if we had Trackman on me, you know, I can actually hit three balls, and I can see which one obviously flies a little further, a little shorter, maybe a bit more spin, how much it fades, get me? So one's called low and scoop now. So basically I'm trying to get the club low through impact and I'm actually going to try and feel like I scoop the club face open and it produces some kind of, some kind of face. So low 
and scoop. There you go. Little drives it low. Tiny little fade. Great. Then I have, which is, which I've been developing from a driver. I call it um, wing and up. So same wing, but I actually lift it up as well. So for the driver to get the thing on a bit, I struggle because I've hit a million and one or 10 million and one balls going down. And the old days with the old, you know, persimmon and balata, you probably never heard of that, <laughs> let alone seen it. It didn't matter. You could hit down on the driver. It was fine because you had a golf ball was like a bar of soap. You just squashed it, you see. So this one was called winging up. So break the arm and lift the club up and it will hopefully produce some kind of different, uh, some kind of different fade, look, maybe a little more. Hit it a little thinner, all these things you learn. If you start getting a pattern to things, that's really useful. You think, oh, if I get a certain lie, I know I hit this one, I'm going down at impact, or it's a little more level, get me a little more up. And the last one is kind of been like my, my flat out one. It's called number one and wrap. So number one is hit this side of the ball. You've heard me talk about that and wrap the blimmin' shaft around my neck. So basically it's as about as full of swing as I can make. So hopefully that's my full. And see what it does. It goes a little higher. Quite often that one might go a couple of yards further. Get me? So I have fun doing that all day long with all the clubs in the bag. And as I said, if I get on, if I'm doing it on track man as well, I can go, ah, that, uh, well, I learned with the driver, when I said that winger, I actually, sometimes I'm four degrees on the down with the driver, okay? And we're trying to get, I can't get up. I'm, it feels like that to me to get up. But my wing and up was only two degrees down. So it's like, okay, I've got something to work on here. If I could cut the two degrees to one degree, um, all because I just changed the follow through, all right? So then we go back to the story about, so when you're playing, what I'd love you to be doing, working all the time, is all these different follow-throughs and you know what they do. Yeah, you go and practice it and feel it and you get, get a little pattern going and start wrecking. Maybe hit the whole bag in the same order. Get me? Or, you know, you hit like I do. I do a scoop, I do a, a wing and I do a wrap. I keep doing them and I start to notice there is a pattern to the shots, hopefully. That one goes a little straighter, the, that low scoop definitely goes lower so when i'm into the wind now i think okay that's my first option the the last one you saw definitely goes higher so i use that when i want to carry something or i'm downwind and i want to hit it like a sailboat get it going forever so you hopefully you'll notice little differences well that so why do you want little differences because on the golf course how many times do you get a perfect yardage you hit your six iron, 175, how many 175s do I get? Probably Zippo. But you'll get a 178 and you'll get a 172, won't you? And you think, okay, so if I'm really being taking this game to another level, I know that follow through goes a little less than my 175. Find the one that's average, one's a bit more, one's a bit less. That's what I had. My wing, so when I did the full, the old days, the bunt, that went, let's say that would go 180. If I bust it, I could get 180. The I have good old hold off, 175, and I knew my wing was anything from 65 and up. But I could take 10 yards off it, which can be very useful. So you know where this game, as you saw from the Masters, is all about knowing where you're going to land it on the green. You know your distances. If you know your distances, then you've done your homework, and then you know where the ball's going to land on the green in relation to the, to the flag. Get me, it's either going to be on an upslope or a downslope. That's how you, that's what helps you select your club. So you've got a pin on the back of the green, and it's only this wide at the back of the green, so you sure don't want to throw it, fly it all the way there. But there's a ridge, there's a downslope in the middle of the green on the right side, and you think, hmm, well, if I land it right on that ridge, and it scoots forward, I'm nice and safe. The, that green is 20 yards wide here. Up there, it's only 10 yards wide. So if I'm being smart, I play a shot that lands and runs, get me? Vice versa for something different. You might have to shot, you've got to carry it all the way. It's just all carry. 
can't be short. Get me? Right pins four yards over a bunker. Well, that's, that's your all carry one. Yeah, so you wouldn't be playing your little knockdown wing. You'd think, okay, I want to be past the flag, so I might as well go for the four one. I just want to make sure I get it there. That makes a huge difference. If you're always in here, it all adds up that you are. Um, the, the stat I was most worried about, well, not worried about, it's not the right word, um, was I caught it the 15 foot circle. If you, how many times in a round can you hit it with every club, even the three wood, inside 15 feet? I'm sure the 15 feet went to, went to 18 feet because 15 feet is only one, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty small, but, but if you actually draw that as a circle, that's a pretty decent size now, isn't it? So when you're standing back down in the fairway and you think, oh, this is a really scary shot, you think, is there, 15, is there a 15 foot circle around that hole? And you go, well, yeah, there is. Well, then it's so much easier. You go, and then you're on the wind, you go, well, I know I'm fading it, so I'd aim on that edge of the circle. So I've now got all, I've got 30 feet to work with. Because I know I'm going to fade it. And it's either coming in perfect or I've, whoops, I've overdone it and I'm over there. Rather than trying to do, get me? It's a simple little formula to keep the golf ball. And sure, when you're playing great and everything is on song and you think, I want to aim at the flag and I want, I'm going for everything. Yes, do it, enjoy it. But when you have to back off and you're not so sure, it's like you need plan B in this game. That's the, that's the best thing in to have is, okay, I'm not feeling great, but I know how to maneuver the golf ball around. Um, as it, and you'll test these, you can test these shots every morning. And I'd like you to be able to do fades and draws, why not? And if you can't, if, if your draw's not working really very well, do you think you should use it on the golf course or not? Huh? No, go with what, go with, the other great word is go with what you know you can do. I mean, I, you know, I used to battle that. This is me talking with lots and lots of years of experience, but when I was on the range, I wanted to draw it, I wanted, I wanted to do all of that. Had to, I wanted, and I, like, you know, I want to, I want to feel great before I go around. And, I, and I was sure enough, I would test it and think I got to, this is a draw shot, I should be able to do this, and pff, you make a mess of it. And then, you know, and then 20 years into your career, you suddenly read Jack Nicholas used to get up every morning and go, well, and he'd gone to range. He said, well, if I was fading it good, I faded it. If I was drawing it good, I drew it. And then you're like, holy smokes, light bulb. <laughs> I mean, how simple is that? Yeah. So don't, and, you know, and if you can't do something, don't get all down. Oh, blum, I can't do this. I can't do that. He can, or she can. I can't do it. But yeah, right now you can't do it. Tomorrow, that's part of working on your game to so maybe tomorrow you learn a bit more you can make that a goal and, and work on it yeah right any questions oh no come on you, that couldn't have made sense and <laughs> um hogan sneed and trevino because that would be pretty good. Yeah, if you could keep up with those, you know. I had spent some time with Sneed. Well, and Lee as well. Lee, um, my, my, he was the second pro I ever got. Well, he was the first pro I ever got really close to. I walked with him at Carnoustie in 1975. For Back in those days at the, at the Open Championship, you could, I walked next to the bag with him. It took him two and a half rounds before he missed the green. And on that 16th hole, it, one day, he pegs up a, it was a driver, par three. He had driver to that. Next day, they moved the pin, driver to that again. So that was pretty impressive. <laughs> so anyway, come on, it's gotta be a, a question of my uh, dreaded golf swing or what your dreaded golf swing, what do you wanna know? What do you wanna learn? What? Yeah, there's two. Yeah, there's more. Probably more, a couple of. There's practice for targeting. 
So I was really, really lucky where my practice ground when I was a lad was a Wellingarn City Club. It was tucked in the corner. It was only 150 yards long. Little did I know it was unbelievably good for me because I had a green, I had a bunker and a flag. So by luck, every single shot I hit over that bunker to that flag. So then now sports psychologists would go, oh my God, that's targeting. That's the most wonderful targeting because my whole upbringing was firing a ball at a flag. I told you this one last year. So even so when you come to a range like an open range like this, you've got to be really conscious of what's going on and, and where the ball is finishing. Because it's so easy to be hitting balls and you, and you think it's all right and you, and you keep looking up, you're aiming for a flag and you go, oh, that looked, that looked great. And you look back again next time and that's, that's half a green left. That would have hit the left edge of the green and missed the green. And you think it's all fine here. So you've got to really, you've really got to concentrate hard on targeting. That's a, two things are so key. Number one is alignment. Just make sure you use something. So, because you can, the whole point of practicing is, and learning is what you do today, you want your own formula so you can come tomorrow and do all again the same tomorrow, yeah? Because I can promise you, if you stand here and I think, well, I made so many kids, I say, where are you aiming? Oh, that yellow flag. So it's a little bit off, but the mind is so good. You come over the top and perfect shot. So you think you're doing great work or you're standing here. Sure, your first shot goes left and you go, oh, didn't like that one. So you have another look at the target and you compensate. Oh yeah, that's better, that's now on target, get me? Well, you see what I'm compensating. See what I'm doing, I'm just, so I do that today and tomorrow I'm doing something different. That is not the way to practice. You simply, you've got to stand out here, put some alignment thing, Right, I know my body is in the same place because I, I know my ball position is starting to be in the same place. That's gonna give me some repetition here because if I start swinging differently and hitting the ground differently, whoa, something's different. So I know this is good, this is good. That means that's wrong for some reason, yeah? And the other thing's so important, ridiculously important, simple, is really double check where that face is pointing. The great thing is we've got track man now, so you, you know, it's, I mean, any instructor's eyes, we can't see impact, but we can now, thanks to Trackman and things like that. So when you, when you really are grinding, it's so important you do learn to put the club face in the right place and, and keep it there. Because so often we go like that and we go, we have our own little syncrasies, we go, shut it a bit and off I go. Well, yeah, here that's easy. You shut the face, you compensate. Yeah, I find a way. But on the, and, the problem with range golf is we hit a ball every 15 seconds. So it's so easy to get in a groove, isn't it? You're always adapting to that last shot. On the golf course, you hit a shot every five minutes. Yeah, it's really different. That's why people say, oh, I can't, I don't get it. I'm good on the range, I'm lousy on the golf course. Well, if you've got all these little idiosyncrasies happening, sure it's easy. I mean, give me, give me, a, give me a half a day, I can hit a, I did a decent shot standing on one leg, one hand, but if I walk down a hole and I'm huffing and puffing and, and did, no way, get me? So you've got to grind on, grind on those fundamentals and, you know, the better you grind on them, on club face, alignment, how decent is your grip, really how, you know, after you've waggled it a few times, is the blooming club face still square? Nothing worse than a couple of waggles in a couple of re-grips and you look down and the thing is like that and you go, well, that's all right, that's me. I'll just, I'll give it a bit of that. That's not gonna work. That's not gonna get you any form of consistency when you really need it, yeah? Any questions? Why did you rebuild your swing? Yeah, my old swing, moons ago, I was, I was 70, so I was, I got, you see, I got a good pair of hands. And I, we were old school, you know, it was very willowy. It was a lot of, I was told, you know, a lot of legs and, and that. And I guess that was close to the old. And 
especially with our equipment back then, especially with the golf ball, you hit it, used to hit it low and hit that riser. Okay, looks really cool, it sounds good, looks good. But when you go and play Lynx golf and things like that, um, you need a much better trajectory. And I didn't have that, so I then had to learn rotation. So, you know, from before I was shut and, and, and that sort of swing, and then I wanted to then learn body rotation to control it. And that kind of, to me, exactly what I, um, exactly what I believe in now. Um, you're talking about warming up. Um, footwork is so important. Jack talked about the most important thing in his game was footwork. And he used to do this really, really simple drill every morning. He'd warm up on the range doing this. Well, look, look what your feet are doing. And look what your body's doing. So everything's lovely and level, isn't it? Belt line, chest, head, right? I'm putting my, taking my weight over, loading, look at the knee, put it down, boom. So I do this a lot now because you've got to teach your body to turn. I used to do this version of it, right? I did so many of these, turn here, put the weight down and then fire it through. So mix those up. If you're struggling with a bit of this, that is huge. It's just the greatest way of teaching yourself. You're trying to look, I'm basically trying to put 90% of my weight here. Yeah, put it back down, back to central and then fire it through. So I'm pretty balanced there. Try that, because if you're somebody's doing this, a little bit too much weight, I can't, can't lift my left foot off the ground if I'm here. What happens when you go through? Just watch the just watch that. Look, you want a bit of turn, back, wallop, hit it, smack it. If you're doing that, look at the difference. Totally, isn't it? And the pressure you're putting on your back as well, another important thing. So think about that. I, when I was rebuilding my swing, I saw photographs of Sam Snead um, and how well he kept his spine. Spine there, his spine angle there, spine angle here, and obviously through as well. And I thought, that makes sense. Sam can still hit golf balls at 80 years old. Then I saw a great picture of Hogan where he was basically here. So it was all so, so clear to me that he just got the, put the club back down in the slot. Now from here, he can do whatever he wanted. Get me? He can jiggle the face this way, a little bit of that way. So the bottom line in all of this is about getting into an impact position. Think of the swing this way. This is another, I mean, how simple is this? Here's your address position. Again, it's back to basics. Get your posture really great. All your angles absolutely spot on. Right, if that's address, there's impact, yeah? There's address, impact. There's your follow through and how and what do we do? We go from here, weight's wrong, and then we do that. Look at the difference. Get me? So all we're trying to do is clear, get from there, set it up. So nothing's changed, is it? Spine angle's the same. So that's, that's easier said than done. So that's when you need core strength because while you're turn, you, you basically want to turn and put the thing back into this slot. That's what we're trying to do. So if you're weak somewhere, then the strength, the strong part takes us, so quite often you're weak here or weak here, and or it can't support it here, and so something wants to help it. So you try to help with the legs. Now look, my body's in a completely different position, so I've then got to find a way to hit the golf ball. Yeah? That's all because you can't start from a good position, turn and return to the same position. Think about that one, that is really important. Any questions? Talk about process with like Sergio and Justin on the 18 hole regulation. How they had to stick to the routine and kind of what yeah. they were thinking about. Oh, yeah, well, quick, quickly on the other part of practice is drills as well, isn't it? Drills. So if you've got to, if you want to change your swing, and your instructor is saying, well, well, then you grind on swing. I'm, I'm all for that, and that's a great. You know, sometimes you do all this, and you're like, if you've been, got some bad motion going. Well, then you've got to learn to grind and put it in a position, double check it, hit it, learn your muscle memory that way. That's another way, really important way of practicing as well. You know, so sometimes to change something, you've got to beat plenty of balls 
I don't know if there's any truth in it, but it's, you know, do your, your drills the last 50 balls or 100 balls at the end of the day. So you've done them all absolutely correctly. You haven't even gone, oh, well, you know, a lot of people hit, try six drills and then they and then they hit three shots. Get me? Well, you can experiment. I mean, I, I can't, I, I would occasionally do my drills and just do them 100%. Every ball for 100 balls, maybe I've done the drill, then go home and hopefully I've soaked up that muscle memory, get me? But there's all sorts of different ways. I mean, it's when you're out here beating balls every day, it's fun to experiment. You know, make notes of what you're doing and how you're doing it. And then, what, and then well, yes, the, you, saw, you saw the ultimate in the process or the routine when Rose and Sergio came down those last, well, you can see the pressure on the last nine holes. Um, that's really important. So this is all part of doing the same thing here. Um, you see how Sergio really grinds a place in the club. They both do, they really grind on place in the club. Um, Justin's posture's great, isn't that? You know, stands perfectly, stands, stood the same all day. That's so, isn't it so important? And it's, but, the, but your routine doesn't just start at the golf ball, it starts, you know, at the bag as well. So every time you take the bag, what do you see? You see the same. So when, even under all that pressure, you didn't see him take nine practice swings, did you? It's not like, most people are like, oh, I'm getting nervous. I've got to, you know, get rid of the nerves. They did the same thing. A um, lot of visualizing, a lot of breathing, wasn't that? That's really important. Low, lower your breath. Don't people say, take a deep breath. Well, that's that. Isn't that a deep breath? Well, look at me. Now go and swing. Get me? It's lower your breathing. Yeah? Get into your zen. So when you can lower your breathing, then you're much more calmer, and these fellas are relaxed. As soon as you get tension, it goes to these, doesn't it? You start going, oh, blimey. And without realizing it, you get tense and you make the same swing, you do everything right, but you didn't quite turn enough, and you go, oh, no, it's gone straight left. Yeah, but I'm swinging good. Well, I don't get it, so I'm going to compensate. The next one, I do a short one, I'm going to give a bit of legs as well. Oh, now what have I got? Well, because you got tense here and they didn't turn. Yeah, so that's a, one of the, the things to recognize when you're playing really good, shooting your best score. Go, okay, we're tightening up. All right, I got it. So it's, it's going straight to here first. So I got to think, all right, I got to make the full swing. Conscious now, oh, great. I'm conscious that I got to make a full swing. And guess what? It's a little bit better, isn't it? Yeah? Any questions? Out of... You didn't participate in the Masters, or are you doing some commentation? Or? What? You didn't participate in the Masters, or are you doing some commentation? Or? Commentation. Yeah, of course, commentator. Of course, com yeah, I haven't heard of commentation <laughs> from Britain. American, term. American yeah. commentation. I'm going to do some commentation. Okay. <laughs> now I am. Um, well, I'm tw I'm f you can't tell, but I'm twice as old as those youngsters out there. Um, now I've been up doing CBS for 11 years now. And once they lengthened the course, um, you know, I really, I was in the transition from, as in, you know, from wood drivers, Bellata ball, then we get the modern equipment. Mm. So we had a harder time, we had to transition to the modern stuff, only a few able to do it. Um, where you lot haven't seen a chunk of wood and a bar of soap. <laughs> yeah. You've got all this modern fangled stuff and you just stand there and smash it. Yeah, so it's a different, it is a different game now, a different swing, isn't it? You've got to have this ability through training. Look at Rory, Rory's five foot nine and, and, and look at Justin Thomas, weighs 145 pounds, he's, he's hitting it three yards per pound, you know? So it's, you have to have, a, you have, to have the ability to shift it out there. Um, we well, look at and you got another unbelievable example with, with Justin, with Dustin, Dustin just, I mean the man's working on his driver and wedge work, I mean the bit in between doesn't, it's going to happen, if he drives it good he's got a wedge into every blimmin hole, so, uh, but you need to learn how to move your body so you can, so you have a decent 
But if you can't, you know, you've, you've got to find a way to make a score. That's the other way. Um, Zach Johnson is not as short as people think he really is. You know, he actually hits it pretty solid with the driver. But, but and, and there's quite a few guys who've got, you've got them, you've got to be great from eight iron down. Simple as that. So think about what you work on. I mean, I used to work, if you work on your driver enough that you know you can hit a fairway and get it, or get it darn close to it, you haven't got any destructive shots, that's a great goal swing. And then from eight iron down, you've got to have that, as I said, that 15 foot circle, you've got to get good enough where you can do that like clockwork. And then you keep, and then on a really good day, you're inside 10 and 12 feet. On a bad day, yeah, you're 20 feet, 25 feet, but okay. Got to get rid of those destructive shots, you know. I, you know, I scream at the TV when I see a guy with an eight iron hit a thing 30 yards off line. I mean, it's unbelievable, you know, you just, but that's because the bodies are totally in the way. They got these power swings, but they must be in your way if you can't hit an eight iron, you know, in a straight line. Yeah, any questions? What's that? Well, double check it, get it everything right, and then start with chipping it. I mean, because it's horrible, and it's the hardest thing. If you're, if you're weakening or through, whatever you've got to do, you move a grip an eighth, and it's horrible. So grind on the club face, get it all correct, and then start with just finding impact. Because it all feels so different, doesn't it? It feels horrible. Yeah. If you, yeah, so just start from that or even even starting even this will feel different if you really grind on it's absolutely perfect check it when even when you stand to that with no golf ball wow that feels different so you're learning back to this yeah where the, the hands are going to be at impact yeah but then it's then just start easy where they, at least you get some good feedback because nothing worse than thinking oh my goodness i've changed it i'm going to hit it over there but because if you've had a incorrect grip, then you must have had compensations, haven't you, in your swing? Definitely. In some way. Were you strong, too strong or too, or too weak? Way too strong. Way too strong. So if you're way too strong, you're Zach Johnson, you're like that. So if you've swung, everybody says change your swing, well, you're going to do that, aren't you? So then, um, so then you know, oh, it's way too strong, so anyway, I can hit it. It's, whoa, do that. <laughs> exactly, isn't that? Zach, you have to do the, the Zach Johnsons, yeah? So the problem with that is be very careful. So you say, everybody says, I've got to change my grip. And then you do, you, then you do your same swing. Get me? So that's, the first what's that? That's why I did the first day I changed my grip. It's you did the first one. Yeah, exactly. So, so throttle it back, get, a, get your really good grip and learn, look, and then start to feel, which will feel awkward where your thumbs are. Little half swings. Thumbs up, thumbs up, you get me? Just just start small and sh get confident that way, okay? Any questions? Out of your, sorry, sorry. What's my pre-shot routine? Um, yeah, I used to like, it was really all back here. As I said, I used to either visualize the ball flying, finishing, or I'd see myself, you know, making the swing or somebody else. I put a ghost of somebody else there. Big Ernie I liked, or if I wanted to draw, I used to see Ernie else standing there. I see his shoulders turn. I could see his arm go through. And I used to stand up and go and pretend I'm Ernie. I used to go, Ernie else. You see? And it worked, didn't it? Hey. So, and then, but. So see it, feel it, get me? Feel the shot, and that's so important. I, I gave a great quote yesterday from Sevi that he used to say, got to feel it in your body. You got to feel the whole shot. It's not just, oh, I want to hit a fade. That's my fade swing. Now you got to stand. I, we have an opportunity in a practice swing to have a proper rehearsal, yeah? And you should make that rehearsal exactly what, try it, try it for a month. I mean everything from a three foot to a flat out drive. So if you're trying to hit a hard low fade, you stand there with your driver and go, great. And if, you, if the little light bulbs are, oh, that was good. 
you get on with it. You stand up there and you think, right, that's what I'm going for, and, and you commit to it. If you make a practice swing here and thinking, right, hit the hole, and you go, oh, we yeah, felt all right, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll fix the balance, well, you know, when I hit the shot. So you now think, well, I've got to keep my balance really good, got to keep my balance really good. Oh, shoot, what happened? You've lost your focus, haven't you? So make sure it's right there, and I mean from everything from nothing, you never, you rarely, rarely see a pro rehearsing a, well, like last week, great example of four foot downhill putt. You rarely see them going, you know, got to relax now. You know, their feet, they gotta, you've got to be like this. Wow, I've got to control this thing. Same with a chip shot. You, I hate it when I see somebody's got a 30 yard chip shot or so. Give me a, the, um, anything, anything with a bit of loft on it. If you've got a shot to the end of the range, you tell me what you think's easiest. Some people stand up and just go like this, don't they? A couple of them. Well, as you know, that, that swing goes that far. So now you've got to tell the brain, you know, I've got to hit it harder. Well, how hard is harder? No idea. Or you, or you stand and think, okay, this is a 30 yard shot. I know that is my 30 yard swing. Okay, if I've rehearsed it and I do it, the blimmin' thing lands on the line. Get me? So think about that one. That's a really good one when you're out on the, on the golf course. Rehearse exactly what the shot ahead, all right? What do you do when you're like choking? Well, yeah, when it's, when you're, well, why are you choking? I don't know, because my dad is gonna say something. Because your dad's gonna say something? <laughs> really? All right, there's an issue for you. <laughs> That's, uh, that is an, an off the golf course problem. Um, the, uh, I was meaning, well, that is a problem. <laughs> that's, that's probably what a lot of you have. You get judged by your scores and what have you. And if you shot 78, that means you're bad. Your dad, you know, you're a bad person. And I'm going to disown you. And well, yeah, it's, huh? So, yeah, external pressure is tough. I mean, you, you've got to, if you are having that with your parents, then you're, you need to talk to them about it and say, I, want to, I don't want to be judged on my scores. You've got to judge me as I'm your son, not, not even a golfer. And, you know, that's for the big boys to deal with. Yeah, and you just get into, the, into really the processes rather than the outcome is really the key. You know, if you get wrapped up and judged by your outcome, you, you, you're bound to fail. At your age, yeah. you're trying to develop mastery and skill mastery, right? So that's a process. So if you engage your parents in the fact you're trying to build those skills up and the outcome will take care of itself, then if you're all on the same page, that external pressure will start to yeah. dissolve and disappear. Have a game plan. Hmm. But choking happens because, like I was, really, the best example I can give is because you don't have a plan B, you don't have an option. If you look down at a shot, choking is before, you don't choke after you've hit a shot, do you? You choke before you hit it because, A, you don't see it, you can't see the shotgun in the right place, so you don't think you can do it. You can't. You don't feel you can do it. So you've got to have. That's why I'm saying all these little follow-throughs sound like fun or silly, but when you're on the golf course, when you get a shot that you don't like, well, then you've got to find an, a shot to fit it. Get me? You've got to find. If you don't like, if there's a water left and there's a pin there, okay, and you don't like the shot. And you're, and you're one back, what do you do? You would you have an emergency it? shot, Nick? Like huh? uh, Tiger Woods used to have a stinger he would always go to. Have you got a go-to shot? Well, that's what I've shown you here. If you, one of those shots, hopefully, like I said, that wing shot. Seriously, you could put a gun to my head and I would survive. Because I knew what to do to make the golf ball do something. Get me? So you've got to... We, you, Exactly as he said, we call it the go-to shot. You've got to have that. So when you're absolutely under pressure and you've got to make this shot and there's water and you don't like this, you don't like that, well, as I say, you can't have a time out. We have to play it, stand up and play it. Well, if you've rehearsed something you believe in, and that's it. If you, 
it's as simple as that. If you if you get nervous doing something, well, you you've got to go and practice something else. You've got to have a plan B. That's what I'm trying to say. This, all these little shots. So I feel like I want to go and play now because I've got a bit of armor. I've got three shots, so I I'm sure that you know if when I'm playing, I'll, I'll start with one and. It's either going to work all, as much as I want it to, or it just gets a little weak. And I hope one of my three fades I can really, really rely on. Yeah? And so when I get really nervous, that's the bottom line. So that's why you practice to develop that. That's mental strength. That's the physical, the technical, and that's your mental strength, that you know you can do it. Then that's belief. And you have to have 100% self in belief in what you're doing. That's a real bottom line. That's pretty simple. You know those guys playing yesterday? You know, standing up to those shots. There's no margin of error, Augusta. You know, you've seen it. You better believe in what you're doing. And they do. They have a plan. They, you know, they, they pick their shot. They know the shot they can play. I mean, both faders. Did you see any of them draw it? No. Get okay, They played. It was good. That's a good thought. They played what they knew to play yesterday. They hit that same old blimmin' fade all the time because they knew they could. Under that pressure, you've got to know that you can put that club face on the golf ball. Yeah? Did you want to? Yes, yes. Uh, so in your practice mix, did you kind of feel like a swing thought to do that shot? Or yeah, I had swing thoughts. I was quite happy to have swing thoughts, you know? In, I mean, like in your practice mix, you kind of feel the swing thoughts to hit like a fade, for example, when you just kind of, you know, more feel the shot as opposed to no, that's what, what I'm saying. I'm, I'm having fun right now. Try it. I mean, you are, as I was saying, you're either a, a field person. So, yeah, if, I'm, if I want to fade it or draw it, as I, as I described, there's a, those are commands to a feeling, aren't they? So one's hold off, so I've got to feel that at impact to hold the blimmin' thing off. The rotate, rotate is where I've got to feel the blimmin' thing rotate to do that. So now I've fine-tuned it down. And I can have fun. And again, I, I've given them names. And it's so funny because it makes my body react. If I want the low scoop, guess what? I stand up and I'm, so I'm visualizing straight away it's got to go there, got to go low. So how do you think I address the ball? I find a way to go low, don't I? Just a fraction. So when I want the low, that right shoulder just pops up because I know that's how I hit it low. Yeah? So that helps me, I think, oh, so that, I click into a position, high right shoulder, low scoop, that gives me that. Right, what was my other one? Wing and up. So if I'm trying to get the thing to move up, guess what, I'm not gonna stand there, am I? Because boy, am I making it difficult. So I probably move a hair, a fraction more, right? Because I'm thinking, I'm coming here, and I want it to come here, so I, it makes my shoulders different. That right shoulder is in a slightly different place. That's there, that's there now. Fractions. So I trust I can do that. I'm, I'm just fine-tuning to make it happen. And, the, and when I want to wrap the thing around my neck, well, drop my butt a bit because I'm trying to hit this thing up in the air. Get me? I know I want to hit this side of it, so I'm conscious of that. And, and I give it a go. So they're all fractionally different, aren't they? So try it. I mean, I can't see... You've got to keep experimenting and and make it fun, huh? Yeah. So you know, as I said, I'm really I'm really enjoying that. Right? That's fun for me. I go out and play, and I think, oh, bit of wind. Try that one. Which one's going to work best? Any more quick questions? Yeah. Well, it's amazing. The uh, well, it's the discipline, um, commitment. You know, I really committed to it. You know, and, I, and so I made a goal that I, when I got to 45, I wanted to say that I'd given it my all. I'd given it 100%. I thought, because golf, you can't go, oh, I'll just have five years off. We can't, we can't do an Adele and say, I'll do an album every five years, yeah? You know, it's like, 
I wanted, I, and I'm proud of that, but I, because you, you need your own personal, I, as I'm saying, I didn't want to get to 45 and go, oh, I wish I tried hard, I wish I did this, I wish I did I did the best I could with the knowledge I had. I wish I had, the, like we're always going to say, I wish I had the knowledge now, back when I was 20, so take it all in, because the stuff you've got now is science. It's way more factual than what we have. We were, as I said before, we were guessing, we were experimenting and guessing. Twenty percent, twenty. Yeah, it's like the little things in golf is um, like anything. If you just if you think I had a, a game plan of a year, two years, five years, and so if I just keep improving one percent each day, how good am I going to be in a year's time? How good am I going to be in two years' time? Because you think, well, well, I'm hitting it lousy now. <laughs> oh, I've got, I've got to practice, do it. You can't see any further than that. But if you set goals like, okay, if I learn it, I really suggest you write, write down what you learned today. The one thing, every time you practice, I never did it, I regret that. Just write, you don't have to write it now, you've got your phones, dictate, whatever. Just go, today I learned this. So you might be, hopefully be a lot more. In my driving, oh, I learned this in my driver. Because you'll forget it. And then if it was going good, why? That's a really, you know, write down what was a fun thing that happened today. You know, it's, so that's, a, and as I say, um, and the process of actually picking a golf club is very much like your process you have to do in business. I mean, you've got to assess things, you've got to assess all of that, the lie, the wind, the temperature, blah, blah, blah. You've got to learn to communicate with your caddy. Then you've got to make a decision. So you've got to learn to make a decision now, right, I'm hitting the six iron with a fade and I'm going to do, and I'm hitting whatever. And then you've got to learn, and then you've got to commit to that. That's the next toughest, which is belief. So you've got to done enough work so you believe in it. So you stand up and go, okay, this is, a, this is a shot and a half down the edge of the lake and pins on the right, but I know I can do it. Yeah? Any more? Just real quick. Out of the six majors that you've won, I don't know if you know that Nick's won, uh, obviously six majors, but he's also won 41 professional tournaments as well. Out of the six that you've you won, which is your favourite and why? Um, well, 1990, my iron shots were really good. I came to the Masters and I, um, I basically, I'm sure I did, but I didn't feel like I was going to miss a green left or right. It was just all about short, just getting the right distance. You know, my accuracy was that good that it was just distance control, and I managed to take that then um, to have won the Masters in 19, and I took that to Senate. Well, the US Open, I hit the hole to tie, which it didn't go in, and then, and then I went to the Open at St. Andrews and basically kept that, all those same iron shots going the same thing. Okay, the Lynx Golf is totally different, like you've got to flight the ball in a cross breeze and it's got to land here and it's going to bounce to there and it's going to run to there. So you have to do all those fun calculations. And that's what I was saying earlier about knowing where the ball's going to land, if it's going to land on an upslope, downslope, whatever. That's all part of it. So that, that for me was, um, was a great time to be playing. But you know, they're all, they're, they're all were good. I mean, I scared myself in 92. I had a four shot lead at the start and then on the 15th tee, I was two back, and I and I finished uh, two under for the last four, and on you know pretty tricky conditions, and and won. So that was special because that was um, my, my shot making there. At Muirfield was very good, and then when I the last win at Augusta was mentally was a great victory because you know I was six back and. I wasn't playing my best that week. It was all of just pushing myself through the process of just doing the right thing and hitting the shots in the right place. Um, so, and I had to push myself mentally. It wasn't happening like this. So, you know, some days it will happen like that. You know, some days you stand and look at the flag and it, it happens like this. Five iron, blum, give me that thing, boom, and you do it, not thinking of anything else. Other days you look and go, oh, I can see that bunker left. Oh, I can see that here. That, well, how do I deal with that? Yeah? So you've got to learn to duck and dive and adapt. <laughs>
How many hours did you practice when you were like that day? Uh, I used to start the day at uh, 8.15 in the morning and then I'd go home at dark. All day. <laughs> Simple answer, all day. And when I changed my swing, you got any of those big buckets? I used to hit five of those big buckets a day, 1,500 balls I used to hit. But you don't have to do that now because you've got track, man. At least it tells you what to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How do you commit to a shot when it's so windy? Because the first and oh. second, how do you like decide whether you know sometimes you have to play knockdown so the wind doesn't affect the ball, and sometimes you play a natural shot and then yeah. you have it. How do you decide that? Well, on a windy day, the first thing you 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 look at is what trajectory have I got to hit this ball on? You, regardless, you're not even thinking of a club yet. The ball has got to fly at that trajectory trajectory to make it to the green, to your target. It can't go like this, don't need that. Find the trajectory, yeah, number one. So then you then got to calculate when it's very windy, okay, if it's going on that, the, that's my five iron, but it's only a seven iron shot. You can't bust a seven iron because it's going to go up there, get me? So that, that's the, when it's really bad, that was my first thought. I want to fly this thing at that angle. I believe it will go through the wind. So what club is that? Well, it's a five. And then you've got to fit the swing to that. You can't, it's not a full flat out five, and you're going to bust the thing miles, right? So you then got to get some feel to it. Learn half shots, three quarter swings. Huh? Yeah. Well, it can really go over the simplest thing is you go and practice it. You can, it. I used to do that intentionally before our Open, you know, our British Opens. I'd be playing a week before in Scotland at the Glen Eagles, and if, I, and if it was a six iron shot, I grabbed the five. I was starting to prepare myself. I mean, it's half shots, it's field shots, all sorts of things. It's again, it's having. Seeing where the ball finishes is really important. Just hitting punch shots on the range, you need to see how far they go. So if you can, you know, hit, hit, to, hit to places where you can see where the ball finishes and you get your feedback. Or when you go out and play, you should have a deal with all your mates, you know, and, and make it a real practice session and say, okay, guys, whatever we think, we're going to grab two clubs more. Why not? You should do that yourself. I mean, you've got to learn and have fun with it. And if anything, you should send them all out with one club. Yeah, we you do know. stuff like that, challenges like that. So you should have a fun day. Or you all pick a club, five or a six, or you, you call it. Everybody's going with a five iron. You put your shorts on, you get two balls. You play one ball, got the other one just in case you lose it. And you run. You jog from, they're all smiling. I like this idea, yeah. <laughs> I want to come and watch this. And you hit your five iron, you jog down the fairway, and you learn to, and you finish the hole with your five iron. Because you'll be huffing and puffing. They love, they love this idea, don't they? <laughs> you, number one, number one, you'll be huffing and puffing. That's, and then when you get nervous, you're huffing and puffing. Yeah, you got to learn to play shots and make quick decisions. Okay. Send me the video of that. They're all going to all kind of come back. Yeah. Above the water. How do I hit that shot? Because I stood in the water with my left one leg. Zoom, zoom, boom, took a 10. Oh! <laughs> so how did I hit this? How, how would you play that? Have you ever had to do that? Yeah, I do. I mean, you know, uh, the, the only example I'm going to say, you've got to, you've got to try everything, haven't you? Uh, my, my coach, my way back, my coach played with Gary Player at uh, Hoylake in 67, I think, in a practice round. And Gary hit it and a, on a hill in grass this deep, and he went over them where most people would say, I pick it up and throw it. He went in there and had a go at it. And I call it tournament lies. 
I used to say to my caddy, Fanny Soon, I said, give me tournament lies. And she'd go around and don't keep hitting chip shots off that. Stick it in that. Stick it in this. Because one day it's going to happen, isn't it? One day you're going to get that lie around a green somewhere, aren't you? One day you're going to hit it in the water. Yeah, get in there and, I mean, seriously, it's, hey, you're all, you're all here to practice. Wow, put your waterproofs on and stand. I honestly don't know what you do. And I shouldn't tell you what to do. You should have fun and one day you should all, like I said, one day you all put your waterproof trousers on and go and drop them. You've got a beautiful lake down here. Put a ball in the lake, learn to go boom, and see what happens. It's the only way you're going to learn. That's fine excitement, <laughs> you know, more excitement. Okay, guys, I think we've got to wrap that up. Um, but the bottom line is practice. You have to try everything and that's the only way you learn. Go in the trees. You know, when you play, there you go. You let your, your bet you're good out the trees. I bet you're the best out the trees. There's a great quote from Seve. He said, people used to say I hid in too many bunkers, but I'm the best bunker player. Get it? So if you, and I would, I would play practice rounds. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cover up my own Faldo boot camp um, when you play practice, I used to hopefully drive it down the fairway. If the flag's on the left, I'd kick it in the left rough. Now that's a completely different shot, isn't it? This is a piece of cake in the fairway seven iron. Now I'm in the rough where I give myself a flying lie. I've got a bunker in between me and the flag on the left. Wow, it's completely different. So test yourselves. You just got to keep testing yourself. Yeah? Don't keep hitting the easy shots because you won't get them in a golf tournament, will you? <laughs> Not in a million years. You get the one where you go, oh my gosh, I've never practiced this. And work out, as you said, if you're in the trees, just work out. Well, why not? If you know, if you know that this is a nine, you know, Dustin Johnson hits half shot, I could just call this nine o'clock. So if I take a six iron and go nine o'clock, nine o'clock, that's gonna carry a certain distance, isn't it? Learn what that distance is. You should know. If, so when you're stuck in the trees and, the, and you look at your yardage, you've got 100 and whatever, 160 yards, you know, okay, if I take my six iron and do a nine o'clock, it will land at 140. I know this chip shot lands at 140. Or you should know what your four iron, five, six, seven iron, how far they're gonna carry with a certain shot, with a knockdown shot, get me? The more you know, <laughs> the better you are, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, okay. guys, show your appreciation cool. for Sir Nick Fowler. Work on that. <laughs> I'll be, uh...